Welcome to Keith Knight, Don't Tread on Anyone and the Libertarian Institute. This is a video I did years and years ago. Thought I'd put it back through circulation. So please excuse the <laughs> subpar audio along with a couple mispronunciations. Uh, this is the CIA Assassination Manual, A Study of Assassination. Table of Contents. Study of Assassination, Definition, Employment, Justification, Classifications, Planning, and Ending with Examples, Preface. Here you find a transcript of the CIA file titled, A Study of Assassination. This unsigned and undated, estimated publication date, December 31st, 1953, 19-page typewritten file was part of a collection of CIA documents pertaining to Operations P. B. Fortune and P. B. Success, and was declassified under the Freedom of Information Act on May 15th, 1997. They were able to cover this one up for quite a while. After years of answering Freedom of Information Act requests with its standard, we can neither confirm nor deny that such records exist, the CIA has finally declassified some 1,400 pages, over 100,000 estimated to be in its secret archives on Guatemalan destabilization program. An excerpt from this assassination manual appears on the op-ed page of the New York Times on Saturday, May 31st, 1997. Operations PB Fortune and PB Success were the CIA code names of the 1952-54 to attempts to topple the Guatemalan government under democratically elected President Jacobo Arbenz Guzman. Arbenz Guzman was elected president of Guatemala in 1950 to continue a process of socioeconomic reforms that the CIA disdainfully refers to in its memoranda as an intensely nationalistic program of progress colored by a touchy anti-foreign inferiority complex of the Banana Republic. The first CIA effort to overthrow the Guatemalan president, a CIA collaboration with Nicaraguan dictator Anastasio Somozo, to support a disgruntled general named Carlos Castillo Armas and codename Operation PB Fortune was authorized by President Harry Truman in 1952. As early as February of that year, CIA headquarters began generating memos with subject titled Guatemalan Communist Personnel to be Disposed of During Military Operations, outlining categories of persons to be neutralized through executive action murder, or through imprisonment and exile. The A list of those to be assassinated contained 58 names, all of which the CIA has excised from the classified, from the declassified documents. PB success, authorized by President Eisenhower in August of 1953, carried a $2.7 million budget for psychological warfare and political action and subversion, among the other components of the small paramilitary war. Also important to mention, Eisenhower gave the green light in 1961 to assassinate Patrice Lumumba in the Congo. But according to the CIA's own internal study of the agency's so-called K program, up until the day Arbenz Guzman resigned on June 27, 1954, the option of assassination was still being considered. While the power of the CIA's psychological war, codenamed Operation Sherwood, against R. Benz Guzman, rendered that option unnecessary, the last stage of PB success called for a roll-up of communists and collaborators. Do we really trust these people uh, with who should be categorized as a communist? You're called a fascist for anything nowadays, or a racist, or a sexist, or an extremist who is a threat to society. Although Arbez Guzman and his top aides were able to flee the country after the CIA installed Castillo Armas in power, hundreds of Guatemalans were rounded up and killed. Between 1954 and 1990, human rights groups estimate that the repressive operations of successive military regimes killed more than 180,000 individuals. Among them, Mayans massacred are the Mayans massacred in 626 documented government-sponsored or government-committed attacks on native villages, today only remembered by a small number of people abroad as the cause for 1992 Nobel Peace Prize winner Rigoberta Menchu, an ethnic Mayan, to start her struggle for civil rights and peace in the region. This document has been carefully reformatted, and let's get into it. 
A study of assassination. Definition. Assassination is a term thought to be derived from hashish, a drug similar to marijuana, said to have been used by Hassan Ibn Sabah to induce motivation in his followers who were assigned to carry out political and other murders, usually at the cost of their lives. It is here used to describe the planning, the planned killing of a person who is not under the legal jurisdiction of the killer, who is not physically in the hands of the killer, who has been selected by a resistance organization for death, and whose death provides positive advantages for that organization. Employment. Assassination is an extreme measure, not normally used in clandestine operations. It should be assumed that it will never be ordered or authorized by any U.S. headquarters, even though the president was authorizing these, Truman and Eisenhower. Though the latter may, in rare instances, agree to its execution by members of an associated foreign service. This resistance is partly due to the necessity for committing communications to paper. No assassination instructions should ever be written or recorded. Consequently, the decision to employ this technique must nearly always be reached in the field at the area where the act will take place. Decision and instructions should be confined to an absolute minimum of persons. Ideally, only one person will be involved. No report may be made, but usually the act will be properly covered up by normal news services whose output is available to all concerned. Uh, for more on this, please research Operation Mockingbird for how the Central Intelligence Agency uh, controls news services. Justification. Murder is not morally justifiable. Self-defense may be argued if the victim has knowledge, which may destroy the resistance organization if divulged. Assassination of persons responsible for atrocities or reprisals may be regarded as just punishment. Killing a political leader whose Bergenoning career is a clear and present danger to the cause of freedom may be held necessary, but assassination can seldom be employed with a clear conscience. Persons who are morally squeamish should not attempt it. Classifications. The techniques employed will vary according to whether the subject is unaware of his danger, aware but unguarded or guarded. They will also be affected by whether or not the assassin is to be killed with the subject. Hereafter, assassinations in which the subject is unaware will be termed simple. Those where the subject is aware but unguarded will be termed chase. Those where the victim is guarded will be termed guarded. If the assassin is to die with the subject, the act will be called lost. If the assassin is to escape, the adjective will be safe. It should be noted that no compromises should exist here. The assassination must not fall alive. The assassin must not fall alive into enemy hands. A further type of division is caused by the need to conceal the fact that the subject was actually the victim of an assassination, rather than an accident or natural causes. If such concealment is desirable, the operation will be called secret. If concealment is immaterial, the act will be called open. While if the assassination requires publicity to be effective, it will be termed terroristic. Following these definitions, the assassination of Julius Caesar was safe, simple, and terroristic while that of Huey Long was lost, guarded, and open. Obviously, successful secret assassinations are not recorded as assassination at all. Of Thailand and Augustus Caesar may have been the victims of safe, guarded, and secret assassinations. Chase assassinations usually involve clandestine agents or members of criminal organizations. The assassin. In safe assassins, the assassin needs the usual qualities of a clandestine agent. He should be determined, courageous, intelligent, resourceful, and physically active. If special equipment is to be used such as firearms or drugs, it is clear that he must have outstanding skill with such equipment. Except in terroristic assassinations, it is desirable that the assassin be transient in the area. He should have an absolute minimum of contact with the rest of the organization, and his instructions should be given orally by one person only. His safe evacuation after the act is absolutely essential, but here again, contact should be as limited as possible. It is preferable that the person issuing instructions also conduct any withdrawal or covering action 
which may be necessary in lost assassination. The assassin must be a fanatic of some sort. Politics, religion, and revenge are about the only feasible motives. Since a fanatic is unstable psychologically, he must be handled with extreme care. He must not know the identities of the other members of the organization, for although it is intended that he die in the act, something may go wrong. While the assassination assassin of Trotsky has never revealed any significant information, it was unsound to depend on this when the act was planned. Planning. When the decision to assassinate has been reached, the tactics of the operation must be planned based on an estimate of the situation similar to that used in military operations. The preliminary estimate will reveal gaps in information and po possibly indicate a need for special equipment which must be procured or constructed. When all necessary data has been collected, an effective tactical plan can be prepared. All planning must be mental. No papers should ever contain evidence of the operation. In resistance situations, assassin assassination may be used as a counter reprisal. Since this requires advertising to be effective, the resistance organization must be in a position to warn high officials publicly that their lives will be the price of reprisal action against innocent people. Such a threat is of no value unless it can be carried out, so it may be necessary to plan the assassination of various responsible officers of the oppressive regime and hold such plans in readiness to be used only if provoked by excessive brutality. Such plans must be modified frequently to meet changes in the tactical situation techniques. The essential point of assassination is the death of the subject. A human being may be killed in many ways, but sureness is often overlooked by those who may be emotionally unstrung by seriousness of this act they intend to commit. The specific technique employed will depend upon a large number of variables, but should be constant in one point. Death must be absolutely certain. The attempt on Hitler's life failed because the conspiracy did not give this matter proper attention. Techniques may be considered as follows. Manual. If it is possible to kill a man with the bare hands, but very few are skillful enough to do it well. Even a highly trained judo expert will hesitate to risk killing by hand unless he absolutely has no alternative. However, the simplest local tools are often much the most efficient means of assassination. A hammer, axe, wrench, screwdriver, fire, poker, kitchen knife, lamp stand, or anything hard, heavy, and handy will suffice. A length of a rope or wire or a belt will do if the assassination if the assassin is strong and agile. All such improvised weapons have the important advantage of availability and apparent innocence. The obviously lethal machine gun failed to kill Trotsky where an item of sporting goods succeeded. In all safe cases where the assassin may be subject to search, either before or after the act, specialized weapons should not be used. Even in the lost case, the assassin may accidentally be searched before the act should not carry an incriminating device if any sort of lethal weapon can be improvised at the near site. If the assassin normally carries weapons because of the nature of his job, it may still be desirable to improvise an implement at the scene to avoid disclosure of his identity. Accidents for secret assassination, either simple or chase. The contrived accident is the most effective technique. When successfully executed, it causes little excitement and is only casually investigated. The most efficient accident in simple assassination is a fall of 75 feet or more onto a hard surface. Elevator shafts, stairwells, unscreened windows, and bridges will serve. Bridges fall into water are not bridge falls into water are not reliable in simple cases. A private meeting with the subject may be arranged at a proxy at a properly cased location. The act may be executed by sudden vigorous blank of the ankles tipping the subject over the edge. If the assassin immediately sets up an outcry playing the horrified vit witness, no alibi or surreptitious withdrawal is necessary. 
In chase cases, it will usually be necessary to stun or drug the subject before dropping him. Care is required to ensure that no wound or condition not attributable to the fall is discernible after death. Falls into sea or swiftly flowing rivers may suffice if the subject cannot swim. It will be more reliable if the assassin can ar arrange to attempt a rescue, as he can thus be sure of his subject's death and at the same time establish a workable al alibi. If the subject's personal habits make it feasible, alcohol may be used blank, to prepare him for a contrived accident of any kind. Falls before trains or subway cars are usually effective but require exact timing and can seldom be free from unexpected observation. Automobile accidents are less satisfactory means of assassination. If the subject is deliberately run down, very exact timing is necessary and investigation is likely to be thorough. If the subject's car is tampered with, reliability is very low. The subject may be stunned or drugged and then placed into the car, but this is only reliable when the car can be run off a high cliff or into deep water without observation. Arson can cause accidental death if the subject is drugged and left in a burning building. Reliability is not satisfactory unless the building is isolated and highly combustible. Drugs. In all types of assassination except terroristic, drugs can be very effective. The assassin is trained as a doctor or nurse and the subject is under medical care. This is an easy and rare method. An overdose of morphine administered as a sedative will cause death without disturbance and is difficult to detect. The size of the dose will depend upon whether the subject has been using narcotics regularly. If not, two grains will suffice. If the subject drinks heavily, morphine or a similar narcotic can be injected at the passing out stage and the cause of death will often be held to be acute alcoholism. Specific poisons such as arsenic or strychnine are effective, but their possession or procurement is incriminating and accurate dosage is problematical. Poison was used unsuccessfully in the assassination of Rasputin and Kolahan, though the latter case is more accurately described as a murder. Edge weapons. Any locally obtainable edge device may be successfully employed. A certain minimum of anatomical knowledge is needed for reliability. Puncture wounds of the body, cavity, may not be reliable unless the heart is reached. The heart is protected by the rib cage and is not always easy to locate. Abdominal wounds were once nearly always mortal, but modern medical treatment has made this no longer true. Absolute reliability is obtained by serving, se severing the spinal cord in the cervical region. This can be done with the point of a knife or a light blow of an axe or hatchet. Another reliable method is the severing of both jugular and cartoid blood vessels on both sides of the windpipe. If the subject has been rendered unconscious by other wounds or drugs, either of the above methods can be used to ensure death. Blunt weapons, as with edge weapons. Blunt weapons require some atomical knowledge for effective use. Their main advantage is their universal availability. A hammer may be picked up almost anywhere in the world. Baseball and bats are widely distributed. Even a rock or a heavy stick will do and nothing resembling a weapon needed need be procured, carried, or subsequently disposed of. Blows should be directed at the temple, the area just below and behind the ear, and the lower rear portion of the skull, of course, if the blow is very heavy, any portion of the upper skull will do. The lower frontal portion of the head from the eyes to the throat can withstand enormous blows without fatal consequences. Firearms are often used in assassination, often very ineffectively. The assassin usually has insufficient technical knowledge of the limitations of weapons and expects more range, accuracy, and killing power can be provided with reliability. Since certainty of death is the major requirement, firearms should be used which can provide destructive power at least 100% in access of that thought to be necessary, and ranges should be half that considered practical for 
the weapon. Firearms have other drawbacks. Their possession is often incriminating. They may be difficult to obtain. They may require a degree of experience from the user. They are blank. Their blank is consistently overrated. However, there are many cases in which firearms are probably more efficient than any other means. These cases usually involve distance between the assassin and the subject, or comparative physical weakness of the assassin, as with a woman. The Precision Rifle In guarded assassination, a good hunting or target rifle should always be considered as a possibility. Absolutely. Absolute reliability can nearly always be achieved at a distance of 100 yards. In ideal circumstances, the range may be extended to 250 yards. The rifle should be a well-made bolt or falling block action type handling a powerful long-range cartridge. A 300 FAB Magnum is probably the best cartridge readily available. Other excellent calibers are 375 Magnum, 270 Winchester, 106, 8x60, Magnum, yada yada, and others of this type. There are These are preferable to ordinary military calibrators since ammunition available for them is usually of the expanding bullet type where most ammunition for military rifles is full jacketed and hence not sufficiently lethal. Military ammunition should not be altered by filing or drilling bullets as this will adversely affect accuracy. The rifle may be of the bullgun variety with extra heavy barrel and set triggers, but in any case should be capable of maximum precision. Ideally, the weapon should be able to group in one inch at 100 yards, but two and a half groups are adequate. The sight should be telescopic, not only for accuracy, but because such a sight is much better in dim light or near darkness. As long as the bare outline of the target is indiscernible, a telescope sight will work, even if the rifle and shooter are in total darkness. An expanding hunting bullet of such calibers as described above will produce extravagant laceration and shock at the short or mid-range. If a man is struck just once in the body cavity, his death is almost entirely certain. Public figures or guarded officials may be killed with great reliability and some safety if a firing point can be established prior to an official occasion. The propaganda value of this system may be very high. The machine gun. Machine guns may be used in most cases where the precision rifle is applicable. Usually this will require the subversion of a unit of an official guard at a ceremony, though a skillful and determined team might conceivably dispose of the a loyal gun crew without commotion and take over the gun at a critical time. The area of fire capacity of the machine gun should not be used to search out a concealed subject. This was tried with predictable lack of success on Trotsky. The automatic feature of the machine gun should rather be used to increase reliability by placing a 5 second burst on the subject. Even with full jacket ammunition this will be absolute lethal is the burst pattern is no longer than a man. This can be accomplished at about 150 yards. In ideal circumstances, a properly padded and targeted machine gun can do it at 850 yards. The major difficulty is planning the first burst exactly on the target, as most machine gunners are trained to spot their fire on target by observation of strike. This will not do an assassination, as the subject will not wait. The submachine gun, the weapon known as machine pistol by Russians and Germans and machine carbine by the British is occasionally useful in assassination. Unlike the rifle and machine gun, this is a short range weapon since it fires pistol ammunition, much less powerful. To be reliable, it should deliver at least five rounds into the subject's chest through the 45 caliber. U.S. weapons have a much larger margin of killing efficiency than the 9mm European arms. The assassin the assassination range of the submachine gun is point blank. While accurate single rounds can be delivered by submachine gunners at 50 yards or more, this is not certain enough for assassination. Under ordinary circumstances, the SMG should be used as a fully automatic weapon in the hands of a capable gunner. A high cyclic rate is a 
distinct advantage as speed of execution is most desirable, particularly in the case of multiple subjects. The submachine gun is especially ad adapt ad adopted to work indoor adapted to work indoor when more than one subject is to be assassinated. An effective technique has been devised for the use of the, a pair of submachine gunners by which a room containing as many as a dozen subjects can be purified in about 20 seconds with little or no risk to the gunners. It is illustrated below. While the US submachine guns fire the most lethal cartridges, the higher cyclic rate of some foreign weapons enable the gunner to cover a target quicker with acceptable pattern density. The Bergman model 1934 is particularly good this way. The Danish Madsen SMG has a moderately good cyclic rate and is admirably compact and concealable. The Russian SHGs have a good cyclic rate but are handicapped by a small light projectile which requires more hits for equivalent killing effect. Shotgun. A large bore shotgun is a most effective killing instrument as long as the range is kept under 10 yards. It should normally be used only on single targets as it cannot sustain fire unsuccessfully. The barrel may be sawed off for convenience, but this is not a significant factor in its killing performance. Its optimum range is just out of reach of the subject. Zero zero buckshot is considered the best shot for a 12 gauge gun, but anything from single balls to birdshot will do if the range is right. The assassin should aim for the solar plexus as the shot pattern is small at close range and can easily blank the head. The pistol, while the handgun is quite effect inefficient as a weapon of assassination, it is often used partly because it is readily available and can be concealed on the person and partly because its limitations are not widely appreciated. While many known assassinations have been carried out with pistols, Lincoln, Harding, Gandhi, such attempts fail as often as they succeed, Truman, Roosevelt, Churchill. If a pistol is used, it should be as powerful as possible and fired from just beyond reach. The pistol and shotgun are used in similar tactical situations, except that the shotgun is much more lethal and the pistol is much more easily concealed. In the hands of an expert, a powerful pistol is quite deadly, but such experts are rare and not usually available for assassination missions. These are efficient calibers, less powerful rounds, uh, can suffice but are less reliable. Subpower cartridges such as 3225 should be avoided. In all cases, the subject should be hit solidly at least three times for complete reliability. Silent firearms. The sound of the explosion of the propellant in a firearm can be effectively silenced by appropriate attachments. However, the sound of the projectile passing through the air cannot, since the sound is generated outside the weapon, in case cases where the velocity of the bullet greatly increases that of sound, the noise so generated is much louder than that of the explosion. Since all powerful rifles have muzzle velocities over 2,000 feet per square second, they cannot be silenced. Pistol bullets, on the other hand, usually travel slower than sound, and the sound of their flight is negligible. Therefore, pistols, machine guns, and any sort of improvised carbine or rifle which will take a low velocity cartridge can be silenced. The user should not forget that the sound of the operation of a repeating action is considerable and that the sound of bullet strike particularly in bone is quite loud. Silent firearms are only occasionally useful in assassination though they have been widely publicized in this connection because permissible velocity is low, effective precision range is held to about 100 yards with rifle or carbine type weapons with the pistols, silent or otherwise, are most efficient just beyond arm's length. The silent features attempt to provide a degree of safety to the assassin, but mere possession of a silent firearm is likely to create enough hazard to counter the advantage of its silence. The silent pistol combines the disadvantages of any pistol with the added one of its obviously clandestine purpose. A telescopically sighted 
closed action carbine shooting, a low velocity bullet of great weight and built for accuracy could be very useful to an assassin in certain situations. At the time of writing, no such weapon is known to exist. Explosives. Bombs and demolition charges of various sorts have been used frequently in assassination. Such devices in terroristic and open assassination can provide safety and overcome guard barriers, but it's curious that bombs have often been the implement of lost assassinations. The major factor which affects reliability is the use of explosives for assassination. The charge must be very large and the detonation must be controlled exactly as to time by the assassin who can observe the subject. A small or moderate explosive is highly unreliable as a cause of death and time delay or booby trap devices are extremely prone to kill the wrong man. In addition to the moral aspects of indiscriminate killing, the death of casual bystanders can often produce public reactions unfavorable to the cause for which the assassin assassination is carried out. Bombs or grenades should never be thrown at a subject, while this will always cause a commotion and may even result in the subject's death. It is sloppy, unreliable, and bad propaganda. The charge must be too small and the assassin is never sure of 1. reaching his attack position, 2. placing the charge close enough to the target, and 3. firing the charge at the right time. Placing the charge surreptitiously in advance permits a charge of proper size to be employed, but requires accurate prediction of the subject's movements. 10 pounds of high explosives should normally be regarded as a minimum and this is explosive of fragmentation material. The latter can consist of any rock hard blank material as long as the fragments are large enough. Metal or rock fragments should be walnut size rather than pen size if solid plates are used to be ruptured by the explosion. Cast iron one inch thick gives excellent fragmentation. Military or commercial high explosives are practical for use in assassination. Homemade or improvised explosives should be avoided. While possibly powerful, they tend to be dangerous and unreliable. Anti-personal explosive missiles are excellent, provided the assassin has sufficient technical knowledge to fuse them properly. 81 or 82 millimeter motor shells or the 120 millimeter mortar shell are particularly good. Anti-personnel shells of 85, 88, 90, 100, and 105 millimeter guns and howitzers are both large enough to be completely reliable and small enough to be carried by one man. The charge should be so placated that the subject is not even six feet from it at the moment of detonation. A large shaped charge with the blank filled with Iron fragments such as one inch nuts and bolts will fire highly lethal shotgun type to 50 yards. This reaction has not been thoroughly tested, however, and an exact replica of the proposed device should be fired in advance to determine exact range, pattern size, and penetration of fragments. Fragments should penetrate at least one inch of seasoned pine or equivalent for minimum reliability. Any firing device may be used which permits exact control by the assassin. An ordinary commercial or military exploder is efficient as long as it's rigged for instantaneous action with no time fuse in the system. The wise blank electric target can serve as the triggering device and provide exact timing from as far away as the assassin can reliably hit the target. This will avoid the disadvantages of stringing wire between the proposed positions of the assassin and the subject and also permit the assassin to fire the charge from a variety of possible positions. The radio switch can be blank to fire blank, though its reliability is somewhat lower and its procurement may not be easy. Examples. Blank may be presented brief outlines with critical evaluation the following assassinations and attempt on people such as Lincoln, Harding, Ferdinand Rasputin, Trotsky, Hitler, Roosevelt, Truman, Mussolini, Gandhi, Abdullah. Conference room technique. 
One enters room quickly but quietly, stands in doorway. Here is where the assassin would be, here would be the bystanders, there would be the subject. Two, opens fire on first subject to react, swings across group towards center of mass, times burst to empty magazine at end of swing, covers group to prevent individual dangerous reactions if necessary, fires individual bursts of three rounds. Three, finishes burst, commands, shift. Drop back through, door, replaces empty magazine, covers corridor, on command shift, opens fire on opposite side of target, swings one burst across group, four, finishes burst, commands, shift, drops back through, door, replaces magazine, covers corridor, on command shift, re-enters room, covers group, kills survivors with two rounded bursts, leaves propaganda. 5. Leaves room, commands go, covers rear with nearly full magazine. On command go, leads withdrawal, covering front with full magazine. And that is the rest of it. These are um, photocopies of the assassination themselves. Now, we have a manual, but what does that prove? Maybe this is one kook writing about something they did in 1954 in Guatemala. Well, this is actually something that has certainly been uh, used on a number of occasions here. We actually have more uh, documents. Here are the 58 names of the people they uh, tried to assassinate, uh, all of which are blanked out. Um, this uh, this uh, document can be uh, verified here at um, the... What was it? Uh, should be um, the archives at George Washington University, I believe, um, gwu.edu. Um, so we will check that. Here is a timeline of CIA atrocities from the excellent, usually excellent, global research. Um, that they go through uh, years starting in 1929, referring to Henry Stimson. We have the creation of the Office of Strategic Services. We had CIA uh, OSS operations in Italy. There was Operation Paperclip. There was infiltration of Greece. There was Radio Free Europe. The CIA creates its first major propaganda outlet, Radio Free Europe. Operation Mockingbird. The CIA begins recruiting American news organizations and journalists to become spies and disseminators of propaganda. The effort headed by Frank Wisner, Alan Dulles, Richard Helms, and Philip Graham. Graham is publisher of the Washington Post, which becomes a major CIA player. Uh, eventually, the CIA's media asset will include ABC, NBC, CBS, Time, Newsweek, Associated Press, United Press International, Reuters, Hearst Newspapers, Scripps Howardly, Copley News Service, and many more. By the CIA's own admission, at least 25 organizations and 400 journalists will become CIA assets. That, I believe, is according to the Church Committee. In 1953... We have uh, the invasion of Iran, referred to as Operation Ajax, I believe. There's MKUltra. Inspired by North Korea's brainwashing program, the CIA begins experiments on mind control. Most notorious involves giving LSD and other drugs to American subjects without their knowledge or against their will, causing several to commit suicide. However, the operation involves far more than this. Funded in part by Rockefeller and Ford Foundations, research includes propaganda, brainwashing, public relations, advertising, hypnosis, and other forms of suggestion. Operation Paperclip. While other American agencies are hunting down Nazi war criminals for arrest, the U.S. intelligence community is smuggling them into America, unpunished for their use against the Soviets, allegedly. The most important of these is Reinhard Gelman, Hitler's spy master, who had built up an intelligence network in the Soviet Union. With the full U.S. blessing, he creates the Glenn Organization, a band of Nazi refugee spies who reactive their networks in Russia. We have uh, the uh, atrocities of the CIA in Guatemala that we mentioned previously. We have uh, the atrocities in Vietnam. We have spraying Agent Orange in Laos, Cambodia, uh, Haiti. There was the Bay of Pigs assassination attempts on Castro, as I mentioned, um, in the Congo. Uh, Patrice Lumumba, as ordered by Eisenhower. Dominican Republic, Ecuador. Indonesia, Greece, again. Dominican Republic, the Congo again, Operation Phoenix, the CIA helps South Vietnamese agents identify and then murder alleged Viet Cong leaders 
operating in South Vietnamese villages. According to a 1971 congressional report, they killed about 20,000 Viet Cong. Well, My Lai Massacre just slips in there. Operation Chaos. The CIA has been illegally spying on Americans since 1959, and now it's with the NSA, it's in the open. But with Operation Chaos, President Johnson dramatically boosts the effort. CIA agents undergo under go undercover as student radicals to spy on and disrupt campus organizations protesting the Vietnam War. They are searching for Russian instigators. Huh. Glad to see a lot's changed. Where? Which? They never find. Oh, Rachel Maddow's gonna find them real soon. Chaos will eventually spy on 7,000 individuals and 1,000 organizations. This is a perfect example of that which you condone happening to the enemy indiscriminately, whoever the enemy is at the time, is going to happen to the rest of us. So, don't justify torture, spying, silencing, murder, assassination, and, sh and banning, because it's just a matter of time. But one, it's unjust, and two, it's also going to affect you in the long run. Uh, CIA organizations uh, assassinate Che. There was Cambodia. Um, there was uh, 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 the unpopular move strengths the once minor opposition parties like the Khmer Rouge, which achieved its power in 1975, which is a big new Brzezinski admitted the U.S. supported uh, Pol Pot in Cambodia through China because of bad PR. Uh, 1973, Allende's Chile. There was uh, Operation Chaos Exposed. Hughes Ryan Act Congress passes an amendment requiring the president to report non-intelligent CIA operations to the relevant congressional committees in a timely fashion. Number of books written 79 back in Iran and uh, back in Afghanistan with Operation mm, that uh, name Op Operation Cyclone, uh, Nicaragua, uh, El Salvador, back in Iran, Honduras, Iran Contra. Panama, the Gulf War, um, it, uh, but this is a long list of CIA atrocities. And finally, we have myths and facts from the CIA themselves. Um, the men and women, and uh, lo look at how they address these things. The CIA spies on U.S. citizens. Well, we already proved that with uh, Operation Chaos, and uh, we have the NSA spying, so that has been refuted. Myth 2. Um, th this is uh, but on the CIA's own website. The men and women who work for the CIA are spies and agents. That is, that's so obviously true. Myth three. All CIA officers recruit and handle agents. Uh, yeah, uh, the fact that they men, uh, they use the terms like all again and again is just straw manning what otherwise is actually a legitimate uh, concern. All CIA officers are quiet, mysterious, live undercover, and lie about where they work. All of them, 100%. You know, as everyone always says. No, that's, that, they're even bad at straw manning their own propaganda. Myth number six, the agency operates independently and is not held accountable to anyone. The CIA is responsible to the American people. So, I disagree with that. I believe they are unaccountable. So let's see if uh, they respond to, uh, uh, I don't know, this video, if they come out and explain uh, their assassination manual. Let's see if the CIA comes out and apologizes for all the MKUltra assassination, torture, uh, atrocities, violently interfering in uh, what otherwise could be voluntary interactions between peaceful people. Uh, the CIA makes foreign policy. Uh, th th does anyone say that they make it as a, 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 it's just made by them, like Gordon Ramsay makes a baked potato? Uh, no, th they're, the claim is they heavily influence uh, the politicians. All CIA officers are fluent in multiple languages. This is so ridiculous. All. Who is saying all? And they make it. N no one else is involved. The president doesn't even know uh, what's going on in foreign policy. Myth 10. CIA officers are the keepers of all government secrets there all again uh, no well we adhere to a strict need to know policy well thank you for watching keith knight don't tread on anyone